All right, now let's move to our menu. So we're going to create a div, and inside the div, we're going to create an unordered list, okay? And then we're going to add some styling and decoration, okay, using colors, transitions, and so on. So let's go back to our index.html file, and right after the header div, okay, let's create another div and give it an ID menu. Okay, so inside this div, we're going to have an unordered list where we're going to place all these items. Okay, so we're going to have list items and inside each list item, we're going to have a link Okay, where we're going to place some text. So the first one is going to be home and for each link, we're going to can give, give it a an href, okay, if we want to and now let's duplicate this line four times, okay, since we have five items and let's change the text of the other links, so online tutorials and then And sign up and contact us. Okay. So this is how our list looks like for now. Okay. So we're gonna need to add some styling to get it like this. Okay. Inline. So let's go to our styling sheet. So first of all, to get rid of the bullet points, okay, we are going to select our unordered list and we will change the list style, okay, to none. And now we don't have any bullet points there, okay? And then to get our list in line like this, we are going to style the list items. So we're going to access the list items from the menu, okay? So first we are accessing the menu using using its ID, so that's number sign menu, and then we're accessing the unordered list, and then we're accessing the list item inside the unordered list, okay? So to get the list in line, we're going to set the float property of the list items to left. Okay, and now all our list items are going to be floating left. Right? Now, we're going to need to add some padding. Okay? So, we don't want any top and bottom padding for now. We only want the right and left paddings. So, we're going to set the Padding property using two values. The first value is going to be for the top and bottom. We're going to set it to zero. And the second value we can choose, for example, 10 pixels. And that's going to be for the right and left padding. Okay? Now let's style our menu div and add some height and background color. So I'm going to Put the styling of the menu just before the unordered list styling okay using its id and let's change the height to 50 pixels probably more 70 okay and let's give it some background so we're going to use gradients again. So we're going to use the background property. Okay. So we're going to start with the top color. And then the bottom color. Here we go. All right. 
Okay, so now let's go back to our list items. And now we're going to style the text inside the list items. And for that, we're going to access the link inside each list item. Okay, so to do that, we're going to access the list item first using the same syntax we used before. And then inside the list item, we're going to access the link. Okay, so we don't want the links to be underlined. Okay, so to do this, we're going to use the text decoration property and we're going to set that to none. Okay, and now our links are not underlined. Also, we want all links to be uppercase, so we're going to use the text transform property and we'll set that to uppercase. Also, let's change the font size and make it a little bit bigger. So let's try 15 or 16. Okay, probably 17. Okay. That looks fine. All right. Now let's add a color. Okay. So we can try to use our colorzilla to select the color, but the problem is once we hover on the element, the color changes. Okay, so we're not going to be able to use colorzilla for this purpose. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click right and go to inspect elements. Okay, and then inside the code of this page, we can guess the CSS properties of the link. Okay, so. So that's our menu div and that's the list and if we access any list item and we select it, okay, then we can see the CSS properties of the list items that is here. So we're looking at the properties of the link and the color is this one. So I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it there. Okay. And now we've got the right color. Okay. Now let's add some more padding to our list items. So let's change this to 20 or 30. Okay. So they are more distant from each other. Okay. Also, let's separate the list items using this vertical bar. Okay. And to do that, we're just going to add some border right to each list item. So, and before doing this, we're going to need to change the height of each list item so that we get the right height for our um, bar. Okay. So, we're going to change the height of our list items to 20 pixels and then we're going to add a border right that we're going to style as following. So for the width we're going to go for one pixel, one pixel and then it's going to be a solid style and for the color we'll use the same color we used for text. Okay, so we can see our bar there. So we're going to make it a little bit bigger. So we're going to change the height of our list items. So let's go for 30 pixels, for example. Okay. That looks all right. Okay. And also, we want to center the text vertically with the vertical bar. So to do that, we're going to change the line height of the text or the link. Okay. So 
it's a very useful property and we'll set that to 10 pixels for example or 20 let's go for 30 yeah 30 looks fine okay all right now let's add some space between the list items and the border of our menu div so we're gonna add some padding to the menu div okay so we only want top and bottom padding no left or right hand side padding so let's go for five pixels and zero let's have a bit more padding probably seven and that looks better okay all right now you will notice that the last list item doesn't have any border right okay so we want to get rid of this okay so to do that we are going to access the last list item of our list so first we're going to access the menu using its id and then the unordered lists and then the list item inside it and then we're going to use colon last child make sure that there is no space between the colon and the text okay so then inside curly brackets we're going to write border right okay and we're going to set that to none and now we can see that there is no border right for the last list item okay All right, now we are going to add some styling to our links so that they change when we hover on them, okay? So we want the color to change to this nice uh, purple color and also we want the font size to become bigger and the font weight to become bold, okay? So to access the links, we're gonna use the same way we have used before, okay? Followed by colon and then hover. And bear in mind, there is no space between colon and text. Okay, so first of all, let's change the font size to 20 pixels. That looks fine. And change the font weight to bold. Okay, and finally, let's change the color to the same purple color we see here. Okay, so let's pick it using our colorzilla. And it's going to be this one and let's go for it and here we go okay it looks like it's a little bit different the one that we picked okay see now okay that looks better okay all right now Let's make our first list item active, okay? Like this. So to do that, we're gonna go back to our index.html file. We're gonna go to the first list item. And we are going to give it a class active and then style it, okay? So we're gonna use the same style we used for hovering on the links. So all we're gonna do, we're gonna add a selector here for the active link, okay? And rather than a colon hover, we're gonna write a dot active, meaning the links of class active, okay? okay for some reason, that's it. And now when we refresh the page, it works, okay? All right, now we are going to add the transition effect that we see when we hover on the link elements. We can see that they go smoothly from the initial state to the hover state, okay? So to do that, we are going to select our links. So we'll use this selector. 
and we're going to use the transition property. Okay, so this is the standard uh, property. Okay. So first of all, we are going to specify which attributes we are looking at. So basically, we want the font size to take a certain duration to move from the initial font size to the final font size. So our attribute is font size. Okay. Then we are going to set the duration of our transition. So let's try first one second. Okay. S for second. All right. And then we are going to set the transition timing function. Okay. So if we set that to linear, for example, so this means that the speed of the transition is the same from the beginning till the end. Okay. So if we try this, we can see that it takes one second for the transition to happen. And also the speed is the same from the beginning till the end. So let's change the duration to half a second. And let's make it shorter. That looks all right. And rather than linear, I'm going to use ease, which means that the speed starts slow, then becomes fast, then ends slow. That looks fine now. Okay. All right. So we're going to need to add a few more lines for this property. Okay. For other browsers. So so we're going to add one line for Safari and we're going to place just before the transition word, we're going to place minus sign. Okay. Minus sign WebKit and minus sign. And then for Mozilla, we're going to do minus sign Moz minus sign. And then for Opera, it's going to be minus sign O minus sign. And for Internet Explorer, we're going to have minus sign MS minus sign. Okay. And finally, the standard is going to be this. We should be working for Chrome, for example. Okay. And now it looks all right.